It's in his death that sinners are redeemed and justified. That's when it occurred, when he put it away. And he was delivered into the hands of sinful men. You stop and think about it. These were the religious people of the day who crucified him. These were the high priests that condemned him. They delivered up the Lamb of God and yet didn't even know that they were delivering up the Prince of Life. Had they known, they wouldn't have crucified him. But the Lord, all the while they were accomplishing their will, and they're called wicked men. It didn't matter how religious they were. None of that stands before a holy God. That's why Christ said of them, in that day they would say, Lord, Lord, have we not done many mighty works in your name? He'll say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Do you realize that that's true of anybody that seeks to approach unto God in any other way than by this one death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ? You remain in your wickedness because you don't have a righteousness that can match that of God. But Christ did. When he was delivered up and crucified, it was according to God's purpose, that word crucified. He died because he was numbered among transgressors. And it says in the third day, rise again. You know why it's important, that resurrection? <laughs> His resurrection is proof that God was satisfied. If you look over one more verse here in Romans chapter 4. These are scriptures that, as the Lord continues to teach me, become more and more precious to my soul. Because it takes it entirely out of my hands. It's not in my believing. It's not in my seeing. It's not how well I can reason and understand it. It's in the one who came, lived, died, and rose again. He earned it. He established it. And upon completion of his work, God imputed it once for all to sinners such as we are. That's what Romans 4.25 says, who was delivered for our offenses. For means because of. The offenses weren't his. They were ours. But here it is again, and was raised again for or because of our justification. That means when he was raised, that's God declaring once for all that he has justified everyone for whom he died in spite of their weaknesses, in spite of their failings, in spite of their blindness and ignorance. Colossians chapter 1. Beginning in verse 15 down to 18, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Now, when it says he is the image of the invisible God, it helps us understand why from the beginning God gave that commandment that there should be no graven images before us because God has purposed only one image of himself, and that is his son. And I will say that that is the only image he has ever purposed. So those today that continue to propagate idolatrous images, pictures of a so-called Jesus, they are defiling what God has purposed, and that is that that image be of his son. Now, I know some say, well, it's a picture of Jesus, so what's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that is that God has never given that order for anybody to make an image of his son. Some trouble, some distress, the Lord bringing you low, I will tell you, your first thought is not praise God for his word. It's you're in the pit. You're wrestling with his flesh. That's our nature. So if that is the way of righteousness, then there's none that can be saved. None. But I truly believe, even as we've seen all the way through here, these are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. David's called the prophet there in the book of Acts. And any prophet we know from Scripture did not speak of themselves, but they, they saw the sufferings that Christ should suffer and the glory that should follow, the spirit of Christ that was in them. That's what this writing is all about. 
And if we miss this, we miss Christ, like the Jews of the first century did. They, they had the scriptures, but they had not the eyes to see. There was a veil over their heart, as Paul said, even unto this day. And that veil is only removed by the spirit of liberty, the spirit of Christ 